After the Mavs upset the Spurs at home in game one of their best of seven series, the question on every Spurs fan's mind was how would Greg Popovich adjust so that the Spurs could win game two at home? Well, Popovich had the easy answer, which was nothing. They executed their game plan in game one, except in game two, they needed to do it better and for a longer period of time. The Texas Longhorns started the season as a top five team and a popular pick to reach the final four. But the Horns hit bottom with a road loss to Oklahoma last week. Now Texas has seemed to find itself in conference play. Finally tonight, the story of an El Paso native and UTEP minor who spent just nine seasons in the NFL, but made every game count on the way to collecting two NFL championships for the Green Bay Packers. At this time last year, David Wiggum was at the top of his game. After a full season with the Diablos, he joined the Aces among the league and was being considered for a minor league deal with an affiliated club. And then his world collapsed. Wiggum took a line drive to his head that ended his season and nearly his life. But he was still determined to play baseball. Well, I'm going to tell my kids one day that that right there pretty much was the situation that made or break my life. He spent the fall getting back into shape and then pitched in Australia in the winter. But he knew his big day would be when he came back to El Paso to throw on the mound at Cohen Stadium. For me to be able to uh, come through, not just as a baseball player, but as a person, I need to step back on that mound again where it all happened and where my life was changed forever. Uh, it's definitely uh, strange. In a twist of irony, in his first start back this season, in the very first inning, two hits went right at the mound. But Wiggum wasn't phased. I'm not afraid. And uh, whether that's a testimony to the, uh, the religious, you know, um, strength I've gained from this all, or rather it's just a, a thing of um, mental will, um, but I, I'm not afraid. It took David Wiggum more than a year with the Diablos to gain interest from the majors, and it may take longer to get back to the top of his game. But the fact that he returned and he's trying already makes him a winner. I was at the brink, you know, of, of everything I ever worked for, and, you know, just in one, you know, screeching second, it's all taken away. Um, everything that I had worked for is gone. I'm going to continue to get better. I'm going to continue working. And uh, I, I think that in the end, everything will, will play itself out the way it should. It's one thing to be a good football team in Texas. It's another to have one of the top recruits in the country. MJ McFarland will have a spotlight on him throughout his senior season as he prepares to play for the University of Texas. And he's already up to the challenge, getting bigger and faster, even before El Dorado spring practice started. MJ's got a great uh, head on his shoulders, and he, uh, he comes out here and he works hard every day. McFarland is just one reason the Aztecs are looking forward to the upcoming season. They have experience at just about every position on offense, and most of the defensive backfield will return for 2010. There's a lot more heart and energy on the team. If you want to see heart, just go to an El Dorado practice. The players go at each other like they're in midseason form. We just try to get the best out of each other because we don't want any excuse not to get win in D.C. next year. Off the field, we're all friends and everything. It's just on the field, we hate each other. And looking good in the spring has helped a lot of kids get recruited. With so many schools checking out McFarland this past year, others have stepped up to show their talent. I only can go to one college, so when other colleges come, it's good to have them see other players because other players put, it to, put in much as work as I have. News Channel 9 Sports with Javi Perez. We have some breaking news to report. Bowie High School announced that tomorrow they will introduce a new head football coach to replace Luis Gallardo, who resigned earlier this year. News Channel 9 has learned that Robert Padilla, offensive coordinator for the Austin Panthers, will be named as Bowie's new head coach. And we are joined live in studio by the Bears' newest head coach, Robert Padilla. Coach, congratulations on the news, and we thank you for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate being here. Uh, coach, tell us, uh, you went from being offensive coordinator at Austin to being named head coach at Bowie these past few weeks. How excited are you to be headed back to your alma mater? I'm very excited. I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to get, uh, get back there and get some things done. Now, obviously, you helped run a very efficient offense, putting points on the board, going perfect in the regular season in district once again this season. Uh, what kind of challenge will it be to implement that system into a new school with new kids? It's, it's a challenge, but I think we can get it done. Uh, the kids are bright down there. Uh, there's no reason why we can't have the same success uh, or at least try to equal the same success we've had at Austin before. 
Coach, obviously the schedule hasn't been set yet, but Austin is scheduled to go to Bowie next season. Is that going to be a game that you're going to circle on your calendar when you know the date? Uh, it'll, I'll circle it only because I'll, I'll get to see some old faces, familiar faces, and I'll look forward to that. Uh, but there will be a couple games before that we need to take care of before we get to that point. All right. Well, good luck on the upcoming season. Robert Padilla, the new head coach of Bowie Bears football. Thank you for joining us, Coach. Thank you. We'll finish off with a high school football player that somehow flew under the radar after rushing for 1,600 yards and scoring 43 touchdowns this season. But he's just now starting to turn some heads. Alberto Navarro is a 6'2 wide receiver with great hands and better stats. But he was one of the last players selected to play for the West All-Stars in Saturday's Senior All-Star Classic at the Sun Bowl. Why? I've surprised people because I come from a relatively um, small school that not, not many people have heard about. Nevada played for Emmanuel Christian High School. And all-star teams like this one are hesitant to take players like Navarro because they're worried about the kids being overmatched. That shouldn't be a problem for Alberto. He runs great patterns, uh, does all the mechanical things well for, for receiver. Now that Navarro has turned heads on the practice field, his next opportunity comes Saturday at the Sun Bowl. He, he won't be well known at the start of the game, but I predict he'll be well known by the end of the game. And the big games this Saturday. Thanks, Javi.